NCBI provides free and open access to publicly available sequence data for all taxa in GenBank. However, we know that finding and retrieving custom datasets has typically required specialized knowledge of NCBI database structure and query syntax. To help alleviate this problem, NCBI has developed datasets. This new resource supports intuitive and flexible access to genomes and genes for a broad range of taxa. We will introduce datasets and provide a tutorial for both web and programmatic entry points. This datasets homepage provides a description of the project and quick entry points to all data and services. Notice that this resource is in beta and as we develop to add new features and functionality, we would love to have your feedback. Now let's use the web interface to download a custom genome dataset. In this example, I'll show you how you can easily find the latest sequence and annotation for the human reference genome, GRCH38. In the Browsing Genome Dataset section, we have links to popular organisms, including human. So click on human to go to a table of all the latest RefSeq and GenBank genome assemblies for human. The table shows you all available assemblies, and the latest RefSeq reference genome is at the top. Within the row are some basic stats such as genome size, contig N50, and the latest annotation release number. To download the data, select the assemblies you want and click Download. The dialog box allows you to select genome, protein, and transcript FASTA sequence and offers a choice of annotation types including GTF, GFF3, and GBFF, the GenBank flat file format. Your dataset is delivered in a structured zip file that contains your selected files in a single data folder. The data report includes detailed information on the assembly, such as the assembly name, bioproject, and statistics like the contig N50, sequence length, and number of scaffolds. You'll also find summary statistics on the annotation. If you're looking for a non-reference human genome dataset, you can browse the table. Or if you want a dataset from another organism, use the organism filter at the top of the table to search by scientific or common name. And you can browse the tree to see which groups have assembled genomes. You can also filter by RefSeq to get the high quality genomes annotated by NCBI. If your task requires a much larger dataset, for example, if you want to build a human or primate pan genome, you will need to download sequence, annotation, and metadata for several assemblies. This task is better handled through programmatic access and more advanced filtering options. Datasets offers both command line and API access. To demonstrate how to use Datasets command line tools, I'll start with a simple example that shows how to gather sequence and metadata for a single chromosome across several human genome assemblies. On the Datasets homepage, select Command Line and you'll see the download instructions. For this demo, I'll be using a Linux terminal. To download the Datasets program, you could simply copy and paste this curl command or copy the URL and paste into your own curl command. Use datasets-help to see the datasets command options. You can retrieve metadata on all human genome assemblies using the assembly-descriptors command. The taxon command takes scientific or common name as well as NCBI taxonomy IDs or use the accession command to specify an assembly accession number. The assembly information is returned in JSON format. But you may want to compare just a few fields out of this file, so use your favorite JSON parser. Here we are using JQ. Here is an example command that retrieves assembly accession, assembly level, and assembly name, and outputs the data in TSV format.
This grep command shows you the assemblies for which datasets downloaded chromosome information. Now we're going to customize the download. I'll first put the assembly accessions into a file, then use the command datasets download assembly and retrieve only chromosome 21 for our list of assemblies. If you are an application developer, we have a public API you can use. Detailed documentation is available on GitHub, and we encourage you to explore our Python library and corresponding Jupyter Notebooks. OK, we've shown you how to get large genome datasets. Let's see how to access gene data and annotation, including sequence data for the gene, its transcripts, and its proteins. Let's say you want to obtain the latest sequence and metadata on SARS-CoV-2 host genes. A recent paper in Nature identified 332 host proteins that interact with SARS-CoV-2 proteins. We'll get the latest sequence of metadata for a subset of those genes. Starting from the dataset's homepage, gene data can be accessed through the Data Tables link. To retrieve gene datasets, you can upload a text file with a list of the NCBI gene IDs or gene symbols, or manually enter a list of gene IDs or symbols, plus the organism name. Say you're interested in learning more about the human host proteins that interact with the viral envelope protein. You can create a gene table based on the human gene symbols taken from the paper. Customize your columns to get the information you want about each gene, including genomic coordinates and resources outside of NCBI, like Uniprot accession. If you want more information about the proteins encoded by a particular gene in the table, in the Proteins column, click the circled number to switch to a transcript and protein view. For BRD4, this shows you the transcript and protein lengths, and it associates the accessions with the protein isoforms. Going back to our six envelope gene interacting proteins, I've selected just the BRD4 and BRD2 genes, and will download a dataset containing the information in the table, plus the sequence and annotation for those two genes. The dataset is downloaded as a zip file that contains gene, RNA, and protein sequences, and metadata and annotation described in two files, the data report and the data table. The data table is tab delimited and opens readily in Excel if you want that, and the data report file contains annotation, including the genomic ranges for all exons. The files for genomic transcript and protein sequence have informative FASTA headers that allow unambiguous identification of the data. Earlier in the video, we showed you the command line download of genomes datasets. Let's now use the command line to download gene datasets. Currently, you can retrieve gene data by three different query inputs, gene ID, gene symbol, or accession. An accession here refers to either a transcript or protein accession number. For organisms other than human, gene symbol must be combined with a species name. Use the taxon flag. In our example, we'll input a text file with a list of gene symbols. Here our input is a list of SARS-CoV-2 host genes. The command to retrieve gene data is very intuitive, datasets download gene symbol and you retrieve a structured zip file containing sequence and metadata, including gene FASTA, transcript FASTA, protein FASTA, and metadata in either TSV or YAML format. Note that we plan to move to the JSON lines format for the data report file. The data table contains a range of gene information for the gene, the transcripts, and the proteins as well as additional data, such as the external identifiers for SwissProt and ensemble gene IDs. 
Again, with standard Unix tools, you can parse the available data fields to build a custom table of the gene information you need. And as we just demonstrated, the default download includes all available sequence files. If you want to filter your download package to a particular sequence type, or maybe you just want the metadata, we provide flags to exclude specific file types. In this example, we're excluding the transcript and protein files, retrieving just the gene FASTA sequence and the metadata. You can also use basic Unix tools to print the FASTA headers for gene sequence, for example. Finally, we mentioned earlier the public API for genome datasets. The API can also be used for gene datasets. We have corresponding Jupyter Notebooks to help with learning the gene-specific parts of the Python library. That concludes this demonstration. Thank you for attending our Datasets CoLab. We'll be having a live Q&A session at 2.30 p.m. Eastern on October 29th. Please join us. And any time after the meeting, please let us know how we can improve the Datasets experience to better meet your needs. You can use the Feedback button on the Datasets web pages or write to info at ncbi.nlm.nih.gov.